The Big 3 Tech Panda Touch is a slick add-on controller for your Bamboo Lab 3D printer. But not only that, it can control all of your Bamboo Lab printers at once. Today, we check out how it works and discuss why its future is uncertain. There's a growing market of Bamboo Lab 3D printer upgrades and accessories from third parties. Previously, I covered the X-Touch, an inexpensive community control interface for Bamboo Lab machines. The Panda Touch is a similar product, significantly more expensive, but with worthwhile extra functionality. Let's delve into the details. Since this video deals with Bamboo Lab 3D printers, it would be remiss of me not to quickly mention the A1 heatbed cable callback. In short, a small amount of A1s have a problem with the heatbed cable. And if you own one of those printers, please stop printing, follow the link to this blog post, scroll down and see the options available. Then follow the link to the registration page to input your preference. It's very frustrating, but after some delays as I gathered information, I feel Bamboo Lab is at least doing the right thing. Let's return back to our main subject, the Panda Touch. The Big Tree Tech Panda Touch is an add-on display and controller for Bamboo Lab printers. And for most people, they'll fit it to a P1 series, as an improvement on the very simplistic display that those printers came with. However, as described and as we'll demonstrate, the Panda Touch can communicate wirelessly with multiple printers at once, making it suitable for print farm management. The current price is $59 and that's a pre-order with units being delivered in late March. Besides the official store, there's also the Big 3 Tech official store on AliExpress which has the same price. Probably the main selling point of the Panda Touch is the fast setup and then the slick interface which greatly resembles that of Bamboo Lab machines. There's a range of other features and we will explore them throughout this video, including some concerns over the longevity of the Panda Touch. At the time of publishing, this is pre-order only, so obviously the only way you're seeing this video is because Big Tree Tech have sent me a Panda Touch free of charge ahead of time to be tested in accordance with my review policy. The contents of the box are pretty typical for this type of product. Very handily, we have a printed hard copy of what they call the user manual, but it's actually more of a getting started quick setup guide. We've got the actual Panda Touch and its base stock connected together magnetically. The touch screen is five inch and everything's injection molded. We also get a small Big Tree Tech sticker and inside the smaller box, a USB A to C power cable, a metal mounting bracket, an Allen key, some M3 hardware and the Big Tree Tech rubber ducky. So far so good, so let's proceed with install setup and a tour. Before we proceed, beyond the quick start instructions that come printed with the kit, it's worth mentioning that there's a much more comprehensive manual available online and I've linked that in the video description. Physical installation is extremely fast. We take our metal bracket, we remove the dock from the back of the Panda Touch, we align the metal bracket with the holes and cut out on the back, and use the included countersunk M3 bolts to attach the two together. We now peel off the backing from the sticker on the bottom, ensure our mounting location is clean and dry, and then carefully stick down the bracket in line with the default display on the P1 series. Ultimately, you could stick this base on any other surface or printer, but I would consider this to be the typical install. Finally, we need to connect the USB-C input on the base to a 5 volt power source, and the P1 series thankfully has a USB port set up for just this. Built into the top of the printer, there's also some little clips to assist with cable management and to keep everything tidy. And if you have a P1S or an enclosure, the cable is meant to be long enough to reach to the hole in the corner of the printer. At this point, you can optionally probe with a multimeter to test if you have five volts going to the docking pins. We can now switch the power on on the back of the Panda Touch to five volts DC, and then place the display in the dock where it will be immediately powered up and enter the setup phase. This is really straightforward, and starts with you selecting your Wi-Fi network and then inputting your password. You're now prompted to connect the Panda Touch to your first Bamboo Lab printer and I'm going to do the P1P that it's mounted on. There's a minimum of four fields that need to be filled in. The first is a name and you can set this to whatever you want. The other three are found in the printer's interface and there's a guide to tell you which menu section to go to for each. When you're done, you can come back to the Home tab and we get an interface not too dissimilar from the X1 series touchscreen. It's clear that the Panda Touch interface is designed to have a Bamboo Lab feel. Let's tour the interface. 
On the main screen, we have temperature readouts and basic controls for things like the light. And if there's a print underway or recently finished, we'll have the status for that too. On the next screen, we have more information plus manual controls for homing and filament extrusion. We also have a filament sub tab, and here I only have an external spool connected, so we get that information, but if you were to connect an AMS, we get the exact same interface as an X1 carbon, allowing us to see what's loaded up, as well as altering material types and colors where necessary. Also from this screen, we have manual control of all of the fans, including the part cooling, auxiliary, and a chamber fan if you have it connected. And of course, we can manually set the temperatures for both the hot end and bed. And for me, the stock controls for the P1 are terrible here, so I appreciate this aspect the most. The next tab is for selecting files to print. The default is a list of all of the files previously uploaded to the machine, and we have a USB flash drive option, more on that later on. Next, we have settings and network, and the most important thing here is going to be auto sleep for most people. I went for two minutes, and after this, the screen will go dark, and tapping it will turn it back on. The final tab we will explore shortly. So far, we can do everything the X-Touch can, but with an X1 series aesthetic and feel. So now let's extend the extra functionality. As I mentioned earlier, the Panda Touch is also good for print farm management. So let's come down to the last tab and add another printer from our network. We have all of the same inputs as before, including the ability to choose the icon that we want, but this time, instead of doing it manually, we're going to tap scan. And after around 20 seconds, all of the Bamboo Lab printers from our local network will be listed, and adding them is as simple as tapping the image, then pressing confirm, and all of the details will be filled in, apart from the access code, which you can now enter manually. After you've done this, your printer will appear on the home screen, and you'll be able to see the status for both. We can of course add more than one printer, although it's a little bit choppy when you scroll between them on the home screen. The control scheme for multiple printers is something I didn't find that intuitive. I expected to be able to tap on one to select it, so when I then switched to manual control, I could do whatever I wanted with that particular machine. But that's not at all how it works, so let me explain how it actually functions. If we come to the lower tab, we can see that each printer is assigned a status, master, slave, sync, or disconnected. For the printer set as master, that's the one that all of the manual controls will work for. Think of it as the primary printer that the Panda Touch is tied to. For all of the printers set to sync mode, and there can be multiples, their status and information will be displayed on the home tab. You won't be able to control them, but you will have a rough idea of what's going on. At any time, you can come to the last tab and change which of your printers is set to master. It will be then listed in the first position on the home tab, and any manual controls you input will be sent to it and not the other printers. In my opinion, this method for switching between which printer is controlled is a little bit clunky, but according to the online manual, it will be addressed in a future firmware update. Probably the most interesting option here for those that run print farms is the slave mode, which will synchronize the commands sent between the master printer and it. I can demonstrate this by coming to the manual controls and then pressing home, and we can see that with that single button press, both machines go through their homing sequence. In a print farm, this could be pretty handy, for instance heating up a whole range of printers in one go, ready to load up a matching material for a batch run. But for most people, they're going to have one printer on master, the others on sync, and change between them to manually control one printer at a time. The final mode you can set a printer to is disconnected. When you do this, it will still appear on the lower tab, but when you come to the home tab up the top, it will no longer be listed. Probably a good option if you've got a printer offline for maintenance, you don't want to see it on this list, but you also don't want to delete it and have to input all of the details again. Previously, we switched the Panda Touch to 5 volts, but we can unlock much more functionality if we instead flick it to the battery icon. Using its internal lithium battery, the Panda Touch will continue to operate as before, even when it's disconnected from the dock. Runtime is approximately 30 minutes, and when you put it back on the dock, the internal battery will be recharged, although there's no battery status or icon, so I've suggested this for a future firmware update. Remember, there's nothing to stop you from printing a base for the dock and keeping the Panda Touch in your office instead of mounted to the printer. As long as everything's on the same local network, you can monitor all of your Bamboo Lab printers, know when the jobs are finished and when they need attention. And for 30 minutes at a time, you can do this undocked as you move around your print farm or make a space. Finally, starting a print job, which is something the X-Touch interface lacks. 
The first thing to know is you can slice and send prints wirelessly to the printer from Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer, exactly the same as you always have before. Also unaffected is starting and monitoring prints from the Bamboo Handy app. All of these systems are independent to each other. The print tab of the Panda Touch will display all of the files on the SD card of the master printer. However, when we tap on one of these jobs, we have the option to toggle which printers it's sent to. So that means if the filaments were compatible, you could run the same G code on multiple printers at the same time. Here, I'm just leaving a single printer ticked and then coming over and tapping the print button in the corner. You'll then get a generic warning, getting you to check that you have the right printer as well as the right filament loaded. And after that, the print job will start as usual. We also have the option to print from a USB flash drive. After it's inserted, we can select it from the top and then running a print file works much the same as before. We select which printer we wanna do, multiples if necessary, tap print and then accept the warning. The difference is now, instead of running directly from the USB flash drive, it transmits to the SD card of any printers you've chosen to use. After that, printing continues as before. This is the option that probably makes the most sense for print farms. Slice a file once and then export it as a plate to the USB drive. Eject the drive and start the print on multiple machines, remembering that you might have the Panda Touch next to your computer rather than on top of a 3D printer. So you can do all of this from your desk. Currently, everything is actually working quite well. However, there are some upcoming events that you should consider before purchasing. Everything that I'm about to mention is covered in more detail in a Big Tree Tech update video, which I've linked below in this video's description. It goes over potential changes to the way the Panda Touch will work, some of them good and some of them bad, and I'm now going to summarize them. Firstly, Big Tree Tech will be adding the Clipper Touch to go with the Panda Touch, and they're going to be running on the same hardware. Initially, I covered the X Touch as a cheap interface for P1 Series Bamboo Lab printers. I later covered CYD Clipper, a cheap interface for Clipper firmware 3D printers. These were both related projects running on the same hardware, a cheap yellow display, ESP32 touchscreen. And once you have that hardware, you can flash either X-Touch or CYD Clipper to use the screen for whatever purposes you need. The Clipper Touch, when it's released, will probably appear exactly the same as this current Panda Touch. And there's even a possibility, not a guarantee, that there'll be a unified firmware that can control your Bamboo Lab and Clipper printers from the same device, which would be fantastic. However, a more immediate concern is that Panda Touch owners should not automatically upgrade the firmware on their Bamboo Lab printer to preserve compatibility. We've seen that the only wiring the Panda Touch needs is 5 volt and ground, which means all of the communication is happening wirelessly. The protocol used by Panda Touch and X Touch is called MQTT, and it's likely that Bamboo Lab will either alter this or phase it out in the future. So if you were to automatically update your printer's firmware to a version where this changed, you might suddenly find that the functionality you've enjoyed no longer works. That's why at the top of the manual, there's an important note stating the firmware versions that are known to work with Panda Touch. So if you have a Panda Touch and Bamboo Lab comes out with a new firmware, you shouldn't update it until the new version appears on this list as compatible. If it does lose compatibility, the Panda Touch will be altered to work with the incoming third-party developer API rather than MQTT. So to be clear, the long-term functionality of the Panda Touch will depend on Bamboo Lab's willingness to allow third-party devices to communicate with their printers. In my opinion, this is quite likely, as Bamboo Lab have already started collaborations with other companies, and they've also allowed users to use the X1 Plus community firmware on their X1 printers instead of shutting the whole project out. This is important context to consider before purchasing a Panda Touch, so please watch the Big Tree Tech video in full before you do. In summary, who is this for? If you're looking to save money on an X1 series printer, you can use a Panda Touch on a P1 series to emulate the interface, but you should also consider the X Touch as a cheaper option. And if you're running a print farm, which I'm not, hopefully you've seen enough in this video to know if it's useful to you. Let me know down below in the comments if you think this is worthwhile and if you're interested in purchasing it once it's released. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.